so we're ready for our second part of the reading. Um, and it's only this few sentences on the last slide. As energy is added to the solid, the particles will begin to move faster. They will vibrate and shift around. Sometimes they may even break, break out of their solid structure. So let's go on and learn a little bit more about that. They'll, be, they'll break out of the solid structure they had formed and enter into a more flexible or fluid state. Hmm. The process we are describing is called melting. Okay. Melting happens whenever a solid is heated to the point that its particles become so active they no longer hold their shape. Different substances melt at different temperatures. Scientists call this its melting point. So I think we all understand about ice melting in a cup. Um, and then if you think about a cube of wax, putting it over a heat source, like a candle that melts the wax. So it's solid at first. And then it, as the heat comes, it melts it. Um, some some things might not have a melting point, I'm thinking. It's just making me question that in my head. Like, does toast have a melting point? Like, is there a point where I could put bread in a toaster and it would melt? I'm just questioning this right now because that's my scientific brain is thinking these things. All right. So then we're at liquids. Liquids are a state of matter with a mid-level range of heat. Their particles are freely moving around and are defined by their tendency to take the shape of whatever object they are in contained in, okay? The atoms and molecules of a liquid are still not moving fast enough to escape gravity, okay? When enough heat is added to a liquid, the particles speed up even more. They eventually break free from the gravity's grip and float freely from whatever container they're in. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta think about this for a minute. So I'm thinking of, let's just think Gatorade. Okay, so Gatorade is a liquid and I can pour it into a cup, I can pour it into a bottle or a bowl or anything and it does, the liquid takes that shape. So that makes sense to me. The problem I'm having with it is um, about escaping gravity. So I got to think about that a little bit more. It says when heat is added to the liquid. Okay, so when I'm cooking, the adding of heat is usually in a stove, oven, or microwave. So if I were to put Gatorade in my microwave for like 30 seconds, what would happen to it? And I guess it would start to boil and I would see the steam coming off of it or any liquid for that matter. And so that steam is actually a gas. So that's what they're talking about, about breaking free of gravity and floating. Interesting. This process of turning a liquid to a gas is known as evaporation. And I've heard that word before, but you have too. A gas that has the most energy of all this. Oh, a gas does have the most energy of all states of matter. And that means that its particles are moving the fastest. The particles move so fast that they expand to completely fill any container they're in. So like blowing a balloon. Blow up a balloon, expands. Okay, makes sense. Matter can change state. So remember, our states are solid, liquid, gas. In the other direction as well. When a gas is cooled enough, it will return to a liquid state. This process is known as condensation. This is the process that is responsible for clouds turning to rain. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So... Rain is liquid water or gas water that's turned into liquid water. Okay. 
Liquid, when cooled, can return to a solid state as well. As its particles slow down, they eventually reform a solid structure. This process is known as freezing. Okay, this all makes sense. How common are states? Are state changes? Okay, every substance can become all three states. Even a rock can become liquid which we see happen naturally in volcanoes. Oh yes, I remember this. When a, the lava is actually liquid rock. If we heated them even more, they would become a gas too. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Usually in nature, temperatures don't get high or low enough for many common items to change states, okay? Water, on the other hand, easily stain, changes states, even at common earth temperatures, which is probably why teachers use the water example so much. It is not unlikely to encounter solid liquid or gas water all in the same day. It's considered a special quality of water that can change states so easily. Without it, the water cycle, which supports all life on Earth, would cease to exist. And I can agree with that. I see all states of water every day. When I wake up in the morning, I usually get a glass of ice water, which means cubes, ice cubes, solid. And the water is a liquid. Once I put my hot breath on there, there's steam that comes about. And that is water vapor, which is a gas. So, yeah, very interesting stuff. Um, I can't wait to learn more about it.